Uranium Energy Corporation – Supply for the US made in the USA Army Uranium Energy was one year ago that we were talking about. Maybe you give us a short idea about the company and I think we have to touch shortly on your exceptional top shareholder base. Yeah, I think when you look at our strategy to stay 100% unhedged in a uranium market where you have a lot of contracts out there, mm -hmm. um, our 100% unhedged strategy truly has attracted contrarian counter-cyclical investors. And, uh, you know, look, it's something we're proud of. I mean, you look at some of the shareholders we've attracted from JP Morgan to BlackRock to uh, Sprott Asset Management. You look at uh, Li Ka Li like Hong right Kong. So it's, it's a... It's a very strong shareholder base and some blue chip investors that uh, uh, you, you don't rarely see in a small cap company, uh, 250 million market cap for us. Um, you know, after 13 years, 157 million shares out is also, I think, a very conservative capital structure we've managed. So, you know, overall, I think even when you look at the volume in UEC on a day to day basis on the New York Stock Exchange, where we trade under the ticker UEC, uh, it also shows that, you know, the market sees us as a volume leader. You know, we're often a go-to name uh, for that unhedged exposure. Uh, so we're proud of that. I think we, we occupy a unique space for uranium investors as a, again, an ISR-focused, U.S.-based, unhedged uranium company that can ramp up production quickly. Also at a very interesting geopolitical time. Exactly, and that's what I want to uh, really touch base here because I think a lot is going on between, let's call it Washington, Moscow, there are, there are sanctions here, counter sanctions there. Maybe you can comment a bit on that and why it is so important with Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, etc. Well, the, the, the big issue is that the US uh, is certainly the, the biggest uh, uranium kind of market in the world in terms of demand. Demand for uranium uh, for US reactors is about 50 million pounds per year. US production this year is on track to be less than 1 million pounds, which is the lowest level since they, 1949. They have to import, right? It's Everything. all being imported. Mm -hmm. So that creates an overdependence. And that overdependence is, uh, it, it's, it's interesting that almost 40% of the US supply requirements are coming from Russia, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan. So, you know, ultimately, not to pick on those countries, but it's more to say that the U.S., I think, feels, hey, we need to have a domestic industry that can provide the raw material for these nuclear reactors. They're generating 60 percent of carbon-free electricity in the U.S. That's massive. And so then you have a lot of these developments where right now there are uh, uranium producers in the U.S. who have filed similar sanctions or similar petitions as uh, what we've seen in the steel and aluminum industry. So that could, to some extent, look to reserve 25% of the U.S. market for U.S. production. The Russians, at the same time, have created counter sanctions, a draft bill that's been introduced in the Duma that may potentially stop Russian exports of uranium to the U.S. All that to say that uranium is certainly a geopolitically sensitive metal, Johan, and I think we're seeing these developments create some anxiety uh, around what can, all, what can all of this translate to in the coming months. So you gotta keep a close eye on it. It's changing on a week-to-week -week basis. So let's see how it plays out. But I think also if we look anywhere on the supply demand side, we have a supply deficit. So if, if that, let's say, geopolitical stuff happens, it hits a market who is in a deficit. So why is the price still below the yeah, $21 level? It's unbelievable. Well, it's a, it's a great question. And uh, you're right. Once you kind of look past the geopolitical tension, you have to go back to supply demand as you would with any commodity. And the supply demand for uranium has really turned a corner as we come into 2018 in a favorable sense for higher prices because supply for the first time in many years post Fukushima is down, is expected to be because of supply cuts, real supply side discipline being implemented by big producers, supply is expected to be down to about 135 million pounds. Demand because of record level nuclear energy growth. Nuclear energy yeah, growth China's is building a lot of reactors, right? The whole right? sector globally is at a 25 year high. Mm -hmm. So demand is, at, is gonna be at levels we've never seen before. This year we'll be at 194 million pounds. So we're finally seeing some nice sort of movement in terms of gap between demand and supply. There's gonna be a supply deficit this year. So the geopolitical tension is happening at a time of a real fundamental 
positive developments for the, the supply side of the equation. Mm, fantastic. So coming to, let's say, yeah, production, um, US production, do you have the possibility, if the uranium price moves a bit, let's say, above the $40 level, to really go like this in production, right? Again, well, you, because yeah. you, have, you have been a producer. We are in, in a very ideal position because we have the infrastructure advantage with our Hobson plan that you see there, which is built ready to go. It has a physical capacity of two million pounds per year. We have the proof of concept that we operated this plant. We operated our first mine uh, in South Texas using the low cost in situ recovery method, which, uh, here, which, is, which you see here as well. And so, it w and this is the production readiness that UEC has maintained. You know, we chose as a strategy in late 2013 to put production on hold because we didn't see the point in a falling uranium price environment to deplete this very precious resource that took years and years to permit and build mm -hmm. and just deplete it and waste it at the bottom of the cycle. So we've really proactively put the production on hold, kept our licenses, kept our core personnel, and now we're in an environment where we're production ready, we have our resources intact, we have our permits intact, our palangana mine that you see there, our, again, our plant, and we've even added assets. We've acquired projects that are fully permitted, like Reno Creek and Wyoming, mm -hmm. to give us even greater production capability. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, great. I mean, what I like with your company also, when I checked it out, it's like you have, yeah, the world's largest titanium project. I th Nobody talks about that. So what's that project up? Well, you know, we've, we've been uh, kind of purposely quiet about this because, you know, we are, uh, we're certainly 100% focused on uranium. We made a very opportunistic acquisition of this Alta Purana project through an option that we acquired in 2015. At the time, there was a real crash in the whole base metal complex, including titanium prices. And now, because of a number of macro reasons, Supplies tighten, demand is picked up, and prices are really rocketing nicely mm -hmm. for titanium oxide. So we really see, you see on that graph there where we picked it up uh, and uh, where the prices have dropped to and this beautiful right, this recovery since then. <laughs> so, you know, all, all we've done so far is uh, utilizing the historic information on the project, put out a 43101 resource, shows a resource of about 4.94 billion tons at over 7% grade titanium oxide, one of the largest pre-production deposits of its type in the world. Uh, I think it's a valuable resource for us that over the coming years we can look to monetize, whether it's a sale or a joint venture or IPO. And you're right, I mean, it's something that is not a main focus for someone when they look at our company, mm -hmm. but it's a great hidden asset there. It's a very large one. I think it's very, with zero, right? So I, far, I don't think I there's any value ascribed yeah. to this right now. And again, as, as the market develops and as we have potentially more news and development on it, uh, this could this could be a positive uh, uh, sort of situation for the company. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, great. Well, Amir, thank you very much for the short insight and uh, great what we saw so far. So uh, I would say keep us posted about uh, those really interesting tensions in the uranium market and uh, keep it going. And please, we want to see you back in production, of course. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, there was Amir Adnani, the founder and CEO of uh, Uranium Energy Corporation. And you heard that the company can be very fast back in production. It only needs a little bit yeah, higher uranium prices, of course. But don't forget, there are big optionalities with titanium, but also vanadium the company has. So check it out. I'm your host, Jochen Steiger, Commodity TV, in partnership with Dukas Kobe TV. Thanks for watching us. Bye-bye from Geneva.